everybody and welcome back to another quick um, video from Granny's Cook Good Kitchen. Okay, y'all, this is what I want to do and I just want to show this part to you all is how I roll out my cinnamon roll, my dough for my cinnamon roll, how I feel, what I use to fill it with, how I cut them, put them in the pan and get them ready in the oven to bake. So this is what I do first. This is what my dough look like when I have it in the bowl and when I let it rise and let it proof. And so it's, when it's ready like this, then just punch it down. And what we do that for is to get the air out of it. Just knock all the air out because of the yeast that makes it rise and all the oxygen air pockets comes in. So we take it out just like that. I normally would just knead just a little bit just to make sure all my air pockets are out. All right, that's about good. And I have to spank that honey. When you hear it sound hollow, nice though. So sometimes I'll put down oil for my work surface and sometimes I put down flour. If my dough is, is a little stiffer than what I would want it to be, I'll put down oil. But if it's, you know, nice and loose and moist like this and really, really soft, pillowy like this, then I'll put down a little flour. All right. Once I put it down on my work surface. And I'm just kind of pressing out any other extra, because you notice how it's kind of like a pillow. Now, if we were doing something like a focaccia bread, just punch them holes in it, but we're doing cinnamon rolls. So, I'm gonna use a little my rolling pin. Let's get this rolled on out. Sometimes when you roll it, you'll kind of hear the, the air pockets when you're, when you're rolling it. Yeah. And you don't have to apply that much pressure to it. Okay. And if you want, you can have like a little measuring tape. If you want it to be a certain length, certain width. But I'm only, I'm gonna break this down into two small pans for a um, six count each. But I use three and three four cup of flour to get this amount here. All right. And sometimes when I when I feel like I have it as long as I want it, then I go ahead and come down this way to get my width. And I'm gonna finish this, y'all. I'm gonna come back and you're gonna see what I do to fill it. All right, we're back. I have my butter mixture. I finished rolling it out. And like when you're rolling it out, and if it seems like it's it's um it's not relaxed, if the if the dough is working against against you, just stop for about five minutes, let the dough relax, and then start back rolling out, and it should just stretch on out the way you want it. So I have my butter mixture here, and we're just gonna spread our butter out. If you like, you can, you know, melt your butter and just let it set until it cools. If you like, you can make sure that your butter is at good room temperature, just like it would if you was making a cake. Soft enough, and you can spread it that way also. And then some people even like to mix their butter and their sugar mixture together to make like a paste. I just don't like to do it that way. But yeah, it's, it's different ways that you can do it to get, um, your butter down because this is what you want to put down first before you sprinkle your sugar mixture on and I just go all the way around honey all right since this is not it's a big of a, a loaf like it normally would be I think that's good enough all right 
right, we got that down. We're coming out with our sugar mixture. And this is brown sugar, just a little tab of granulated sugar. Cinnamon, I do a pinch, just like a pinch of nutmeg, I do a pinch of clove and a pinch of salt, but um, more so of cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon. Yeah, so you don't wanna be stingy with the cinnamon because these are cinnamon rolls, honey. So you wanna make sure the cinnamon stands out in the taste. Camera fell, sorry about that. That was a bad accident. Is that good? All right, let's go. First time for everything, huh? Yeah, you just sprinkle generously with your sugar mixture. Honey, put it on much as you like. I call myself having everything at my reach. I knew it was something I was forgetting my spatula. I guess I'll use my hands today. So I'm gonna have to walk away from you guys. Let's get all this on here. Okay, no spatula, so I know that I have my spatula to kind of swerve this around evenly as possible, spread it. Bring it all the way out. Because everywhere that melted butter is, it's gonna kind of like soak up. It's gonna absorb that sugar, the sugar mixture. And this is what we do. And this is brown sugar. If you like, you can use um, light brown sugar. Now when I do my red velvet and my strawberry, I use light brown sugar because I don't be wanting the mixture to be so dark. All right, we're gonna just go with that. All right, what's next? Okay. Let me turn this off for just a minute, y'all. Let me clean my hands. Be right back. All right, we're back, y'all. So now we're just gonna get our pan ready. And what I do, same butter that we spread it over the dough. I just use a little of that to just butter my pan or whatever dish that I'm baking the rolls in. Just kind of go around with the brush, same brush, and just butter the pan. I just want to share this with you guys so you can just kind of see some of my process and what I do. And I'm getting my, my cinnamon rolls ready to go out to be eaten by beautiful people. All right, we got that ready. All right, now we're ready to roll our dough. And you just start from this end. Just kind of gather that because this is part con in here to you. If you want to make them huge, then you can go from the short end and go this way. They will be humongous then. Kind of like what they sell at the fair. Okay, sorry about this hacking way, y'all. I didn't bring my brush over. I'm not stepping away again. Let's go. Just gonna roll it in. Just kind of take your time. You don't want to push it in because if you push this tip in and then when it, it's baking up, you're gonna notice how it's gonna plump up in the middle. So just kind of just like lay that over to get it started. And you just roll it. Once this, once it catches up, then you just roll. Roll, baby, roll. Roll, roll, roll. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. That's it. Then if you want to, you can kind of pick it up a little bit just to tighten it. So not much. You don't have to be tightening that much. Sorry, y'all. I don't have my brush over here. My other brush. Brush away all the debris. All right. And then what I do is I just take me just a little water and something and just take my finger. Just kind of go down just so it can seal 
that's all. Just kind of going all the way down the end of it before I close this roll up. It'll just kind of seal it. And when it seals like that, you just you get ready to close it up. Make sure that end is like that. You just come on down now. And then you got your roll there. And you're ready to get your pans. It has already been buttered. Okay, I hate to be. Y'all, forgive me. I'm going out one more time and I'm coming back in. I hate to not have what I just really normally would have to work with. Be right back again. Okay, we're back again. I got everything kind of cleaned up where we can get our roll and cut it. So I got my parchment paper. I like to put down parchment paper because I like to set my roll actual on the parchment paper. So every little thing that I do, and I know I'm just, all right, let's take my paper. I don't know, don't ask me why. It's something that I do just kind of help form it. All right, and we're ready to cut it. Let's see, we're gonna do six per pan, right? Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Normally I would cut down the stem, but we're just gonna cut it. This is just a demonstration for you guys. I just want y'all to see what I do. I know one thing, honey. I love this roll. It is so soft and pretty. Look at that. Look at those swerves. Yes, honey. So we just cut it, and then I just pick it up. What I do, I pick up from this end because I'm looking at where it's closed at. You see that seam that's closed? That's the seam, you know, when you, you open up, honey, when you're eating it, you pull off and bite, pull off and bite, yeah. So I pick it up from that seam. That's how I just pick it up from this end. Oh, these are gonna be so nice and beautiful. Okay, let's eyeball when I'm cutting just depends on like the pan I'm using what's that two four six that's one pan so now we're gonna probably these probably won't be as so notice the seam going this way we got this seam going that way to the to my right and this seam to my left that's how I normally would pick it up oh this Oh, and let me let me share something too that really helps. Any kind of serrated bread knife, you see how this knife has those those ridges. Anytime you hear them say anything like a serrated knife or bread knife, the best for is cutting any kind of bread dough, yeast rolls, cinnamon rolls. You know, it cuts so easy and quick. And you just pick it up. See how pretty they are, y'all. I know. And then that's that last one. Just kind of plop it down and kind of flatten it. Or if you like, you can kind of, if you want it to be even, really even and cute, you can, you know, cut that end off. But like I say, these are not for sale, so I'm just saving all the bread today. But normally I will just cut that little end off just so it can be nice and neat. So we, you see we do have an extra one here. Two, four, six, two, four, six. All right, so our pans are already ready here. And we just take them. Let's see. Let's go with, we're gonna go with the small one. Cause they're gonna spread, they got the proof again. We're gonna put them in the oven. And um, what I do is I set my oven at 170, just enough to get it warm, then turn it off. Once I hear it, it uh, clicks at 170 that it's heated, I turn it off because the light, if your oven have a light or a fan on the inside of it, then that's, a, that's enough heat and air um, that will just keep the oven warm enough where they can go ahead on and proof. And when I say proof, so they can rise because, you know, they're looking like this now, but when they actually proof in the pan, honey, they're gonna spread. And I'm gonna show you that too. Let's just get going with these other ones on in here. Let's see, this is a small one here. 
and I'm gonna take one of these pants to my daughter-in-law. And I'm hoping my other daughter-in-law is still here. I gotta call to see. And if so, then both of them. All right, since we got an extra one, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and put you in there. Can't leave you out by yourself, now can we? So, and, and like this size here, y'all, you can make them small and narrow like that. You just won't have to roll out as much, roll your dough out as wide. Really, I could have split it in half and just had like two or three pans of them this size. So, all right. So, I'm gonna cover these with some clean wrap gonna put them in the oven and let them sit under the light and let them proof and we'll be back before I get ready to bake them. I want you to see what they look like after they proof. Okay y'all we're back. I just put the cinnamon rolls in the oven. Um, it's preheating and it's baking now at 350 degrees. I set my timer for about 22 minutes. What I have in here is my powdered sugar. We're gonna go in with just a little melted butter. Also I put a pinch of salt too in the powdered sugar. Oh, let me get one something. I'm oh, sorry. I forgot about. And don't tell me I'm out of it. Um, okay, I guess I am. Oh, no, here it is. It's looking just a little corn syrup, light corn syrup. It gives that, uh, it keeps your um, your the, the frosting, the glaze with a nice shine to it. So I put just a little in there. All right, so that's our melted butter, our pinch of salt, our corn syrup, and now just a little milk. And you can pretty much eyeball when you put your milk in, or just a little vanilla. Just gonna eyeball it. Don't know how much about a half a teaspoon maybe and I'm gonna put just a little snippy just a smidget of lemon just a smidget what how much what's the measurement for a smidget honey let me tell you I guess if you take like an eighth teaspoon and cut that eight in half and half and that that's probably something like a smidget I don't know just a little bit of lemon that's only your preference. You can go with just vanilla. So when I start mixing mine, that's how I know how much of eyeballing that I would do for is adding more milk. You wanna go for like a thick frosting, a thick glaze, a runny glaze, liquid, thin glaze. You want it real, real thin, then that's the more liquid you add in. You can go with milk, you can go with water. You can use 2% milk, half and half milk, evaporated milk, whole milk, buttermilk. Yeah, buttermilk. If you wanna put a splash of lemon juice in it, you can. Just have you think you want. Give a little glaze to taste on top of your cinnamon rolls. Add some more butter in here. Just whisk this and get the consistency that you're looking for. A little bit more. Then once you get your glaze made up. Now, if you want it to be thick like a frosting, it can. If you want it to be a little thin like a glaze, like I say, that's all will be left up to you, my dear, my friend. But if you got people standing around wanting to send them a rose, because the longer they bake, the more that smell is gonna start going out the door, out the window, honey. And somebody probably is gonna be knocking. That way you're gonna get your frosting on out the way. As soon as they come out the oven, you're ready to slap the frosting on and they're ready to be eaten. So I think that's good. 
That's good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful color. Now, if you want your glaze to be a snow white, just like the ice and sugar, then I would suggest pick up your cheap bottle of clear vanilla flavor. It's not gonna be the pure extract, but it's gonna be a vanilla flavor, which is still good to me. I, I like I like all of them because all of them still has a good vanilla bean flavor to it. But the clear, it will um, keep your powder from being tinted, like a little kind of like an off beige color. So, and that's all left up to to your preference. Also, it's it's nothing, no big deal about that. But yeah, this is this will be our frosting that we're going to glaze our cinnamon rolls with, honey. And so when they finish baking, I'm gonna bring them back and we're gonna put this glaze on. We're gonna pull one out and do a taste test. Be back. All right, y'all. They're out of the oven and they're hot. So we're gonna put a little butter on them while they're warm. And then we're gonna let them sit about five minutes and we're gonna come back and we're gonna put the icing on them. Just base them down with a little butter while it's super hot. Beautiful, huh? Let's kind of let that butter land right in the center. Because we all, everybody love that center part. And let it set a little bit, like I said, about five minutes, and we're gonna put our icing on. Five minutes, there we go. Oh, it's so hot. Y'all, let's give these five minutes to cool just a little. We'll be back. All right, let's get this. Get this frosting on. Mm. I can make up another batch. That's all right. That's gonna work just great. How about that? I could do another. You get to see the first one. Everybody like a lot of frosting chai.
sauce. Ribby sauce. Hope you guys like this video. Share this video and please subscribe to this channel if you have not. And you can make your own cinnamon roll in your own home, honey. Bye, y'all.